Overall, vocabulary development engages readers in a wide range of academic content and opportunities for choice, provides direct instruction on words and phrases critical to academic content comprehension, exposes learners to new words multiple times, and encourages elaboration using new words, mental images, and pictures and symbols to clarify meaning. Active learning refers to instructional strategies that focus on engaging students as active participants in their own learning process. Authentic opportunities for active learning go far beyond just playing fun learning games and are critical for English learners as a tool for accelerating language acquisition. Oral and written engagement strategies that apply active learning may include turn and talk, the teacher poses a question and students turn to a partner to discuss an answer, think, pair, share, the teacher poses a question, then asks students to think, sometimes Students may also be asked to write down their thinking before pairing up with a partner and sharing what they think. Four corners. A question is displayed prominently for all students to see and each corner of the room is assigned a claim. Students get to decide which claim they most agree with and go to that corner. Discussions can take place within the corners before each corner shares the reasoning with the class. Adaptations that support English learners with diverse characteristics and needs may include allowing for short, simple answers when establishing routines, emphasizing eye contact, taking turns, and active listening through body language. Once a routine is consistent, providing sentence stamps to structure responses into complete sentences. As students advance, offering add-on scaffolds and opportunities to elaborate with connectors, such as, I think, blank, because, blank, also, blank. Focusing on improving listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and thinking skills, rather than right or wrong answers. Strategically pairing English learners with partners who can support in language practice without the overuse of translation. Allowing for English learners to generate thoughts and ideas in their primary language first, as needed, and assigning roles to partners, the first to exchange ideas with and a second to relay the message he or she just heard. Overall, active learning maximizes engagement, can be used to promote a high-energy student-centered classroom culture, help students develop self-awareness, a sense of community, and self-management skills, and can address both cultural and linguistic needs for diverse groups of English learners. Strategies that involve interactions between an English learner and other students or adults such as turning and talking and student collaboration overlap with many of the vocabulary and active learning strategies already mentioned. These types of learning interactions are a critical component in promoting language acquisition. They provide students with a structure with which to engage academic tasks, promote content and language development, and afford opportunities for oral discussions, which in turn will improve an English learner's ability to write. A learning strategy is a series of repeated steps used to solve or to complete a problem. Learning strategies help students monitor their own learning and can be taught to students for them to apply in multiple settings across all content. There are three main categories under which learning strategies fit into metacognitive, cognitive, and social or affective. Metacognitive strategies are meant to help students think about their own thought process. Examples of metacognitive learning strategies include planning for learning, monitoring one's own comprehension and production, and evaluating how well one has achieved a learning objective through self-reflection. Cognitive strategies involve using one's own mind to solve a problem. Examples of cognitive strategies involve manipulating the learning material in some way. This can be accomplished mentally through mental problem-solving activities or physically using manipulatives. Social or affective strategies are learning strategies that help students build social interaction skills and the ability to manage their own emotions. Consider how this is related to active learning and interaction strategies that require collaboration between students. Examples of social or affective strategies may include interacting with another person to assist learning, asking for clarification, and using effective control to assist learning tasks. In other words, students learn to regulate their own emotions in order to accomplish a common learning goal in cooperative groups. Explain and describe the three categories that all learning strategies fit into. Although responses may vary, the three categories you should have identified are cognitive, metacognitive, and social or affective. Revisit the previous slide for descriptions of each one. To support English learners with diverse characteristics and needs, teachers must a. Directly teach every new vocabulary word to all English learners b. Construct a list of all the different needs of each learner c. Know basic strategies commonly used in ESL content-based instruction 
and how to apply them? D. Expect English learners to differentiate for themselves by providing strategy choices. The correct answer is C. To support English learners with diverse ESL teachers supporting ESL teachers supporting English learners with diverse characteristics and needs should be aware of the differences between ESL services and any special education services that individual students may also qualify for. ESL services are provided to all English learners based on their developing English language proficiency needs. Recall that ESL programming accommodates grade level content by communicating, sequencing, and scaffolding instruction and are initiated by a home language survey obtained upon students' initial enrollment. Special education or SPED services are offered to students who qualify based on a disability-related need as determined through an appropriate assessment administered by a qualified diagnostician. SPED services may then develop an individualized education plan, or IEP, for the student which may require instructional content to be modified. This can include setting instructional goals and pacing below the student's current grade level. Note that this is not the case for ESL services which require students to receive accommodating instruction at their current grade level. Also. Notice that in order to be evaluated for SPED services, a student must have parental approval, whereas a language assessment to qualify for ESL only requires a home language survey that indicates the student already speaks a language other than English or that a language other than English is spoken in the home. An overall understanding of the differences between these two services and the individual characteristics of English learners will better prepare teachers to distinguish between a student's language proficiency development needs and learning disability needs in general. Knowledge of this important distinction should help ESL teachers implement appropriate grade level instruction for English learners and prevent inaccurate over-identification of English learners as candidates for SPED services. True or false? ESL services are similar to SPED services in that they allow for teachers to modify grade level content. The correct answer is false. Recall that this is one critical difference between the two programs. ESL services require instructional accommodations, but content must be taught at the English learner's appropriate grade level. Gifted and talented English learners. English learners with individual differences may also include gifted and talented, or GT students. The identification of gifted ELs presents a challenge, especially when a student is in the early stages, beginning or intermediate English language development often due in large part to the current lack of adequate testing in the student's primary language. ESL teachers can help to identify ELs that may potentially qualify for GT services by providing instruction that is inclusive of their students' various cultures and being mindful of bias in assessments that could initially exclude an English learner from identification. ESL teachers can take the following measures to ensure gifted and talented English learners thrive in their classroom environments. Incorporate a variety of learning strategies. Provide a language-rich environment. Stimulate and encourage creative thinking by incorporating students' interests. And scaffold critical thinking through culturally responsive student-centered tasks. When do English learners require accelerated instruction? This important group of English learners is defined in the combined components of this section as those students in grades 3 or higher who are at the beginning or intermediate level of English language proficiency in reading and or writing. Accelerated instruction for these students must be focused, targeted, and systematic. Many of the strategies already discussed in this section can be implemented within a shelter instruction program, which will be further discussed throughout this domain to provide adequate instruction. Focus. Means instruction in academic tasks must be specifically designed to promote students' English language development. Teachers may need to reteach academic and social vocabulary, build schema to aid in comprehension, organize groups to support ELs, and use assessments for accommodations. Targeted requires that the instruction and academic tasks are purposefully aligned to the language proficiency level of ELs. Teachers may need to identify language objectives, provide tools for expression, accommodate activities and materials, and plan academic and social discourse. Systematic refers to instruction and academic tasks that are carefully planned and consistently implemented to address the progression of skills necessary to support the accelerated learning of English. Teachers may need to implement routines and procedures, encourage cooperative learning, 
plan accordingly for progression of skills, and use sentence frames and scaffold the questions. The ELPS instructional tool, linked in the supplemental resources of this course, provides further guidance on supporting students with accelerated instructional needs for language acquisition. Students in grade 3 or higher who are at the beginning or intermediate level of English language proficiency in reading and or writing require blank. A. Special Education Services B. Active Learning Strategies C. Translation Services D. Accelerated Instruction The correct answer is D. Accelerated Instruction Language objectives should specify A. The academic content vocabulary and helps students are expected to implement B. The content objective only C. The accelerated instruction D. The academic vocabulary tier and each student's language proficiency level. The correct answer is A. The academic content vocabulary and the ALPS expectation. Effective practice, resources, materials, and communicative competence. This section combines components 3C, 4C, and 6A, which all require the application of effective practices resources and materials within content-based ESL instruction to engage English learners in critical thinking and foster their communicative competence. In the previous section, we introduced key instructional strategies that facilitate cognitive academic language development and content area learning to provide some background. This section will focus on defining content-based instruction as synonymous to sheltered instruction and further explore the three components of accommodated instruction, communicated, sequence, and scaffolded. 3C requires that the ESL teachers apply knowledge of effective practices, resources, and materials for providing content-based ESL instruction, engaging students in critical thinking, and fostering students' communicative competence. 4C also states that the ESL teacher must apply knowledge of practices, resources, and materials that are effective in promoting students' communicative competence in English. Note that both components require application of knowledge so as to foster and effectively promote students' communicative competence and 3C specifically refers to content-based ESL instruction. Likewise, 6A requires that the ESL teacher apply knowledge of effective practices, resources, and materials for providing content-based ESL instruction. This component specifies the need for instruction to be linguistically accommodated, more specifically, communicated, sequenced, and scaffolded to the students' levels of English language proficiency, engaging students in critical thinking, and developing students' cognitive academic language proficiency across content areas. Content-based instruction and shelter instruction are nearly synonymous terms. Both target intentional language development through comprehensible input during academic instruction in all content area subjects. Some of the specific strategies that support language learning may be familiar to teachers as best practices. However, keep in mind best practices alone do not suffice for the specific language needs of English learners. To put it in the language of the components in this section, ELs require appropriate linguistic accommodations within content-based instruction to promote their communicative competence. Linguistically accommodated instruction has three components which require the content to be communicated, sequenced, and scaffolded. Communicated means that comprehensible input is provided to convey meaning of key concepts. Examples may include visuals, active learning, appropriate speech level and pacing, and using students' primary language as a resource. Sequence means providing differentiated instruction aligned with students' language development progression. Examples may include pre-teaching targeted and intentionally selective vocabulary and using supplementary resources and materials to support students' content and language needs at various levels of development. Scaffolded refers to the temporary structure supports that build self-efficacy and independence as ELs acquire both language and content knowledge. These scaffolds may be oral, instructional, or procedural. Examples may include orally recasting or paraphrasing content, providing wait time for students to respond, as in I do, whole class, we do, in groups, to you do, individually, providing sentence or paragraph frames and patterns or models students can use to help them participate during instruction. Shelter instruction strategies may look familiar since many of the same strategies also apply to effective instruction in general, or what are often referred to as best practices. 
However, there are other characteristics unique to shelter instruction as seen through the language lens. Notice wait time, adapted materials, language objectives, clarification in a student's primary language or L1, appropriate speech to match students' language proficiency level, supplementary materials, and student background experiences are all features unique to shelter instruction. Pacing strategies, scaffolding, student engagement, content objectives, vocabulary review, hands-on materials, feedback provided, meaningful activities, links to past learning, review and assessment, clear expectation of tasks, supplementary materials, higher order thinking skills, and a variety of grouping strategies are all features shared by both shelter instruction and best practices. What are some of the unique features of shelter instruction? Although answers may vary, you are on the right track if you mention wait time, adapted materials, language objectives, clarification in a student's primary language or L1, appropriate speech to match student's language proficiency level, supplementary materials, and student background experiences, as these are all features unique to shelter instruction. Shelter instruction is utilized in various acceptable ESL instructional models, including CALA, or the Cognitive Academic Language Learning Approach, GLAD, which stands for Guided Language Acquisition Design, the Specially Designed Academic Instruction in English known as SADAI, QTEL, which refers to quality teaching for English learners, and the Shelter Instruction Observation Protocol, commonly referred to as IOP. You may or may not have heard these models mentioned before, as TEA allows each local education agency to decide how they will implement content-based instruction so that it is linguistically accommodated for English learners. These models simply offer a variety of choices that can enrich ESL teachers' ability to effectively communicate, sequence, and scaffold instruction. The components of shelter instruction models may include lesson preparation using relevant and rigorous curriculum developed with English learners in mind, building on students' existing background knowledge, communicating content through comprehensible input, strategies for sequencing and scaffolding based on language proficiency levels, collaborative interactions using academic language, opportunities for practice and application, structures for lesson delivery that include both content and language objectives, and assessments that track progress in both academic and language development. Different programs may take different approaches and emphasize different strategies, but all shelter instruction models are founded in the communicative language theory discussed in Domain 1, Competency 2. All offer acceptable ways in which to help English learners develop language proficiency, academic skills, and content knowledge within a low-risk environment. Select a list that includes three examples of shelter instruction components. A. Student Engagement, BICS, and COP. B. Building Background, Comprehensible Input, and Strategies for Sequencing and Scaffolding. C. Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Language Proficiency Levels. D. Cross-Curricular Student Expectations, Proficiency Level Descriptors, and Language Domains. The correct answer is B. Building Background, Engaging students in critical thinking. As you just learned, shelter instruction supports student engagement by offering strategies that help to ease the language load. Teachers are thus able to ask questions and provide tasks that include critical thinking. Students must engage in critical thinking so that they can effectively communicate using cognitive academic language. The following section highlights the specific relationship between strategic student grouping and level questions that promote the level of student engagement and intrinsic motivation required for authentic critical thinking. Alternate Grouping Strategies What do alternate grouping strategies provide ELs? Implementing alternate grouping strategies will provide English learners with the ideal setting to engage in content-specific activities and in academic conversations with their peers. This should occur in a consistent and systematic way through activities that may include pairing up students or arranging small groups of linguistically and or academic heterogeneous students. Additional benefits include social-emotional learning while diminishing feelings of isolation and anxiety, and students will eventually become more comfortable speaking. How should groups be structured? Alternate grouping should occur in a consistent and systematic way. Some activities may include pairing up students, while others require arranging small groups of linguistically and or academic heterogeneous students. Groups will require practice so that structured roles, clear expectations, accountability, and adequate time to engage in conversation become part of the routine. Level questions. You may already be familiar with the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy, knowledge, comprehension, application, 
analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Many models have since evolved from Bloom's original work, but no matter which model a teacher chooses, recall that higher-order thinking questions must be planned in advance. This chart provides three question-level examples from Bloom's taxonomy and the respective linguistic considerations for the English learner. As you read the questions, consider what type of scaffolding may best support English learners to better understand the questions. Question level. Remember, recall. Question. Are seats sometimes carried by the wind? Linguistic consideration. Yes, no student response. Or head not if in pre-linguistic stage. It is tempting to only rely on only these types of simple questions when a student's English proficiency is in the early stages. Question level. Analyze differentiating. Question. Which of these seats would be more likely to be carried by the wind? The round one? The smooth one? Or the one with the fussy hairs? Linguistic considerations. English learners may require visual supports such as images of the seats themselves. Question level. Create. Generating. Question. Why do you think so? Linguistic considerations. Note that this type of question may require scaffolding such as sentence stems or visual supports and a vocabulary word bank to help English learners communicate at this level. Student motivation and engagement. Student motivation and engagement are key factors for language acquisition, academic achievement, and positive behavior. Many variables can impact an English learner's motivation. This may include the language learning environment, the student's age, personality, cognitive development, and other sociocultural factors. ESL teachers can positively influence motivation with the following strategies. Provide feedback on growth, planning engaging learning activities, providing choice, and facilitating student-led projects of their own design. Motivation and engagement are intrinsically connected Many of the learning strategies that enhance engagement in the classroom will also motivate students to learn. This include incorporating physical movement, using humor, games and competition, initiating friendly controversy, presenting unusual information, questioning to increase response rates, connecting to students' lives, connecting to their life ambitions, encouraging application of knowledge, tracking and studying progress, providing examples of and teaching self-efficacy. True or false, student motivation and engagement are key factors for language acquisition, academic achievement, and positive behavior. The correct answer is true. In the section, components 4D and 5B are combined as we discuss the interrelatedness of listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and how to select and use effective strategies that help English learners develop both oral language proficiency and literacy in English. 4D states, the ESL teacher understands the interrelatedness of listening, speaking, reading, and writing and uses this knowledge to select and use effective strategies for developing students' oral language proficiency in English. 5B also requires a ESL teacher to understand the interrelatedness of listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and uses this knowledge to select and use effective strategies for developing students' literacy in English. As explained in Domain 1, literacy and oral language are not developed in isolation, and many effective strategies overlap to develop both oral language and literacy skills. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing are all critical components of our interrelated linguistic system. The ELPS, 2009, recognized this importance. So incorporating the ELPS into instruction is not only a requirement, but also makes practical sense when developing language proficiency. ESL teachers need to give equal attention to each individual language domain and consider how each domain contributes to and supports the development of other language skills. Each language domain is interdependent on the interaction and improvement of the other. Students become better writers, not by writing in isolation, but through reading or listening to the work of other authors and thinking critically about how to incorporate new learning. Similarly, students improve oral language abilities not just through conversational practice, but through listening to others speak in different contexts. This is commonly understood as best practices among teachers. However, for English learners, comprehensible input is required to further develop their language proficiency, and it's an important component of shelter instruction practices along with other effective strategies specifically designed to target language development. Define the interrelatedness of the four language domains. Although responses may vary, if your response included how each language domain is interdependent on the interaction and improvement of the other and should not be taught in isolation, you are on the right track. Effective strategies to transfer language skills from L1 to L2. 
The effective strategies for language transfer from L1, where an English learner's primary language to L2, English, are discussed in this section, components 4E and 5E. 4E states, the ESL teacher applies knowledge of effective strategies for helping students transfer language skills from L1 to L2. 5E also asks that the ESL teacher apply knowledge of effective strategies for helping students transfer literacy knowledge and skills from L1 to L2. As determined by the previous section, it is important we discuss language and literacy skills together due to the interrelatedness of the language domains. Given the right supports, English learners are able to transfer content knowledge, will develop academic skills including literacy skills and learning strategies from L1 to their L2. In fact, the transfer of literacy skills and schema across content areas is the premise on which bilingual models operate. ESL teachers should be aware of ways in which students can use their L1 skills as a strength to augment their abilities in L2. For example, English learners who can already read in their L1 do not need to repeat the process for learning how to read in L2. They may be able to instead use their existing comprehension skills and apply them to an appropriately scaffolded English language text. Domain 1, Competency 2, further explains the concept of language transfer. English learners with previous schooling in their primary language may also already understand certain linguistic elements or entire academic concepts. Potential areas of transfer may include metacognitive and metalinguistic strategies such as visualization, the use of graphic organizers, mnemonic devices, and vocabulary acquisition strategies. Pragmatic aspects of language acquisition also transfer. This may include the willingness to take risks in communication through a second language and the ability to use paralinguistic features such as gestures to aid in communication. Factors that may contribute to the transferability may include some writing conventions and orographic elements when both L1 and L2 are alphabetic, text directionality when the text proceeds from left to right in both languages, similarities in semantic elements or cognates such as words which share origins in another language like English and Spanish words that share Latin origins. The following strategies will assist in the transfer of literacy skills from L1 to L2. Gathering data about what the student may already know in their primary language, either from the student directly or from interviews with parents. When available, implementing assessments and observations in the student's L1. Explaining common cognates in both languages for students who do not already recognize them. Explicitly teaching phoneme combinations that may exist in English but not in L1. True or false? Given the right support, content knowledge is transferable. The correct answer is true. Personal factors affecting English learners. In this section, components 5G and 6D are combined because they both discuss the personal factors that may affect English learners and effective strategies for addressing those factors. 5G states, the ESL teacher knows personal factors that affect students' English literacy development, such as interrupted schooling, literacy status in their primary language L1 and prior literacy experiences and applies effective strategies for addressing those factors. 6D also requires that the ESL teacher knows personal factors but focuses on those that affect students' content area learning such as prior learning experiences, familiarity with specialized language and vocabulary, familiarity with the structure and uses of textbooks and other printed resources and applies effective strategies for addressing those factors. Personal factors that can affect literacy development may include students who have experienced interrupted schooling known as students with interrupted formal education or SIFE. These English learners may sometimes be refugee and asylum seekers, but could also include highly mobile English learners who have gone extended periods of time between enrolling, withdrawing, and re-enrolling in U.S. schools. If the English learner's literacy in L1 is not well developed or they have had limited prior literacy experiences, the following strategies will benefit them. Hands-on activities, literacy-focused learning strategies, and building on background from students' unique life experiences. These students may also require specialized support in all content area learning due to limited prior academic learning experiences, unfamiliarity with specialized language and vocabulary, and unfamiliarity with the structure and uses of textbooks and other print resources. The strategies that can address these factors include individualized interventions, tutoring, access to services, and extracurricular opportunities. True or false, SAI stands for Student with Interrupted Formal Education. The answer is true. It is now time to exit this module so you can return to the course and move to the next module.